I'm Mr. Lusiso Kanyula once more. Welcome to Pia Funda episode. This next topic that we want to tackle with you is called uh, trigonometric functions. Functions are the same, whether you do them in paper one or the paper two. The idea behind them is the same. Fortunately for trigonometry, there are only three types of graphs that we'll be dealing with. The first one is called the sine graph, sine theta. Maybe let's just call it y is equal to sine theta. The full graph, however, will, will look like uh, y is equal to a, maybe I'll have p here, sine p, then I'll have my theta. Oh, I can also develop it, it, it if I'm adding q. But this is how it will look like when it's actually, com com the, the full uh, sine graph will look like that. But for now, I just want us to understand the mother graphs first before we move them along the x-axis or move them up and down along the y-axis. If I'm sketching the three mother graphs, for the sine graph, I will have y is equal to sine theta. Let me just give an interval of, of, of where theta is an element of between zero and 360. For all these three graphs that I want us to sketch here, I want us to use the interval of zero and 360 first. I call these mother graphs because these are the original graphs before they are being shifted either along the x-axis or y-axis. The next graph that we'll be sketching will be the tan graph, then the cosine graph. Now watch. <coughs> if I'm going to sketch this graph, I must know my amplitude. In this particular case, this A stands for the amplitude. It is important that you must have an idea of this stuff. Number one, this is how a sine graph will look like. Generally, this is how a sine graph looks like. Number two, this is how a cosine graph will look like. You must have this in your head before you go to these graphs. Number three, this is what how a tan graph will look like. Uh, that is 360. Uh, this will be 180. This will be 90 and 270. You know that this one will must have an asymptote at 90. And two seven. So this is how a tan graph will look like. Uh, from this side, I will only show half of it. From that side, I will show half of it. But basically, this is how a tan graph looks like. The first one is a sine graph. The second one is a cosine. The third one is a, 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 a tan graph. I want us to understand how to sketch this graph. Um, I said to you the first thing that you need to understand is this value here, the amplitude. This one will give you a period. This one is a shift whether we're shifting it up or down. If it is plus, it means that you take the sine graph, you push it up by whatever unit, whatever value of Q. If, it, if this was minus, it means you're shifting it down. Now watch. <coughs> it is important that we must also understand that this P will give us the period. It is important to note that the period of this graph, the period generally, it will be uh, 360 degrees. The period of this graph is also 360 degrees, while the period of this one is 180 degrees. This is the period. What is the period then? A period is, a, is, is when you sketch your graph from the beginning up to the end. It's how you sketch that graph. In other words, from here to here, this is where the period finishes. If I can start another circle of this graph, that's another one but the period will be between this part to that part where I can sketch my full graph. But the period will change depending on the value of, 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 of the P here. Now, let's do this thing. In this particular case, I know my A. My amplitude in this particular case is one because there is no value there. So this is one sine theta. If my period, what is the amplitude? Amplitude is the highest point from here to there is the amplitude. So this distance here must be one unit which will be the same as this one. So this one will be minus one. So that is the amplitude. Now, if, if the value here is two, then it means that this graph will go up and turn at two, not at one, because this one is turning at one, because my amplitude in this particular case is one. Now, if I'm sketching this mother graph, I know that my amplitude is one. Number two, another important factor of this graph is the period. Look at the value that is here. That was represented by P. 
If there is nothing here, it means that the value there is 1. In other words, generally, the periods of these graphs are 360 degrees. Now, to find this, if, suppose if this was, there was 2 here, I was going to take the, in fact, when, whenever I've got nothing here, it means I've got 1. So the actual period there will be 360 over 1, which is 360. So if I've got a 2 here, I will say 360 divided by 2 and get the actual period, which is 1, 8. And it has some effect on this graph. This period it can either uh, enlarge the graph or squeezes it together. If the value here is a fraction, it will just enlarge it. If it is not a, if it is not a fraction, it will be uh, squeezing it together. But we'll make examples to explain that further. Now, let us sketch this, quickly sketch this graph. If my period is 360 degrees, as I see it there, my period is 360. What is this saying to me? I can sketch the full graph from 0 to 360 degrees. I know my amplitude, it will be 1. This is minus 1, and this is 1. Another very important factor here is to find these intervals. You know there are important points here in this graph, in all of them. In this graph, this point, this point becomes important. The point where the graph turns is another important point. So this point becomes important, that point becomes important, this point where it cuts becomes important, this point where it turns becomes important, and where it ends. So from here, it's one, two, three, four. There are four important points there that I must take, take note of. So uh, likewise, in this one, this one becomes important where it will cut the x-axis. I know that this will start originally from one, it will also turn here, it will cut here, and it will also end there. It's one, two, three, four. So what is this saying to me? If I'm looking for those important points, I've got to find, to take my period, we call those, I will call those interpoint uh, intervals, I'll call them my intervals. Now, I know that this is the actual interval that I'm working on, but this smaller part, parts where, where, where I will be turning and cutting, I will refer to them as intervals for now. You take your period, if you take your period, you divide it by four, it will give you those four important parts of, of, of that graph. Now, if I take my period, to find the interval, it will be the period, which is 360, and divide it by four, I will get, what do I get here? It is 90 degrees. So this, this interval is important. What is this saying? This is my step up. I'm gonna step this graph up by, 30, by, by, by 90 degrees. It means that if, if that is 360, halfway it will be 180, this will be 90, this will be uh, 270. So this graph will be going 90, 90, 90, 90. I got them 90 from there. So what if the period is different? The intervals will be different as well. Now, let me sketch this graph. It is important that at the back of my mind, I must know that I'm sketching the sine graph and it starts from zero. The cosine graph will start from one if the amplitude is one. Now, if since this one is, 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 is it's a sine graph, it will start from here, from the origin. Let us quickly sketch this graph together. This is zero, this is the first point where it starts. Now, this interval goes in 90, so at 90 something will be happening. So this graph will be going up and stop at 90, this tells me. In another land, something will be happening. So I'm going up, ah, it will cut at 180 degrees. As I move on, between, uh, at this will be the coordinates. X is 270 and Y is minus 1. So those become important and as I move on, I'll stop at another 90. So this is how this graph will look like. Just put it together, this first important point it turns, another one it cuts, another one it turns. Ah, this is the graph. Don't forget to name your graph. If it was F, you name it F. In this particular case, we said Y is equals to sine theta. Now, a number of things can happen in this graph. We can either shift it up or down. Suppose we say this is Y is equal to sine theta plus one. What effect does this have on our graph? It simply, simply means that you take this graph, you push it up by one unit. If we are sketching this one, uh, it simply means that you take this part, you shift it by one unit. What type of a graph are you going to get there? Ah, it's no longer going to be turning at one, it will be turning at two, because I've shifted up this graph by one, I've shifted up my original graph by one unit. So if I do that, I will take, this part will be there now. Look at this one. This part will be here. Where will this part be? I've shifted this position by one unit, it will be there. Where will this one be? It will be there. I've shifted it by one unit up. Where will this, this one be? It will be there. I've shifted it by one unit. Where will this one be? It will be there. I've shifted it by one unit. Now, how 
how, how would I sketch this graph? Ah, let's do it. You just have to join all these points that I've sketched there. It will be a graph like this one. You see, it is the same graph. The only thing that has been done in this graph, it was shifted by just one unit. This is what Delft took up. If this value here was negative, it means that I've got to shift this graph down by one unit. Just take everything down by one unit. The graph does not only shift along the y-axis, it can also shift along the x-axis. We'll just do more examples on those shifts as well. I want us to look at the cosine graph quickly. The mother graph, uh, if we've got y is equal to cos theta, where theta is an element of 0 and 360. We want to sketch this uh, cosine graph between 0 and 360. It is also important that you must know what, let's sketch the mother graph first. Number one, what is the amplitude of this graph, the highest point? The highest point will be five, will be one in this particular case. It means that I've got one there, I've got one this side. So it's one, one, the cosine graph. This is one, this is minus one. This is 360, because I've got to show it up to 360, from zero to 360. All right, this part then will be, okay. The next thing I've got to find my interval. What is the period of this graph? It is 360. Do I have any value there? Yes, it is one. So what, what do I know? I know that my intervals will then be 360 divided by one. This is the period, the period first, which will be 360. The intervals, I take this 360 to find the interval or the stepping up, I, I take that 360 divided by four, I will get 90 as well. So it is the same thing as in the sine graph. So if I divide the spaces by 90, this will be 180, this will be 90, this will be my super band. So it's 90, 90, 90, 90. Right, let's quickly go over it. Uh, let's sketch this graph. Remember, this is the typical graph that we're sketching, the cosine graph. I will start from there at one, at the next 90 degrees, I'll be cutting. At the next 90 degrees, I'll be turning. My color, no 180, no minus one. That's where I turn. I move on, this will be my next important point. The last important point will be 360 and one. That is how the, 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 the cosine graph will look like. Make sure that your graph has got smooth curves. These are graphs. Remember, if I shift these graphs, Okay, let's come back to this one. Let's come back to this mother graph that I have here. I want you to, note, to take note of something. Remember while you are doing your, your trigonometry, you knew that if you've got sine into 90 degrees uh, plus theta, or let's say minus theta. If you remember the reduction formula, sine into 90 minus, because we've got 90 here, the ratio will change. What is sine into 90 minus theta? Ah, what do we get here? Uh, because this is 90, sine will turn into cos. This will become cos theta. Or if we've got cos into 90 minus theta, it will be sine theta. So if you introduce 90 on sine, it becomes cos theta. Now let us take this cosine graph and introduce 90 and see if we're going to get a cosine graph. Let us take this sine graph and introduce 90. What is it that I'm saying? I'm let us take this sine graph and shift it by 90 units. In other words, if we take it this side, we're adding 90 units. So in other words, I want us to look at the graph of y is equal to sine into 90. If I'm moving this side, it's plus, plus theta. Oh, okay. I'm just adding nine, theta plus 90 or 90 plus. If I take this graph, it will be a cosine graph. How, how will it be a cosine graph? I'm shifting this, this graph along the x-axis. I'm shifting it along the x-axis. If you shift it here, you shift it along the axis. X axis. If you shift it there, you're just shifting it along the y axis. Now, let's shift this graph and see what will happen. By 90 degrees, we're this is a shift. We're shifting it by 90 degrees. If we take this point, this point, shift it by 90 units, it will be here. So this point here will be here. Where will this point be? It will be here. We are making all this point, you're shifting all of them by 90 degrees. Where will this one be? It was a 270 shifted by 90 degrees, it will be here at 180. Where will this one be? It will be here at 270. Because there's another one that, that, that if this graph continues, that one, if you, shift it, if you shift that one by 90, remember it would have been up there, it should give us 
a point that is somewhere here. If that point that, that has been there by 90 degrees, it will give us a point that is, that, that is there at the 360. Let's see what happens if we join this point. Oh, we'll have a graph like this one, like this one, like this one, like this one, like that one. Ah, so we sh see that if we shift the sine graph by, by 90 degrees, it will become a cosine graph. As you see, it is exactly the same as this one. That is why whenever you push 90 degrees into a sign, it will become a cosine graph. Thank you for now.